Today, let's talk about books. I'm gonna share with you three books I've read during my pregnancy that I really, really have loved and would totally recommend. I am a first time mom. I am currently 31 weeks and sitting in a very partially done nursery right now. It is part nursery, part home office. I was sitting there all day doing work. Um, but also generally trying to set this place up. We'll talk about nursery stuff in another video, but I thought this chair would be sweet to sit in while I talk about the books because this is the rocking chair and I expect to do a lot of reading to little baby girl in the months and years to come in this chair. For now, I've been reading on my own <laughs> with her in my belly and let's start with the basics so this first book is um recommended to me by my ob i asked her what she would recommend in terms of having something to read that gives you lay of the land uh, kind of that whole what to expect and some of the facts about what's going on she mentioned this your pregnancy and childbirth month to month it has the kind of seal of approval of the American College of Obstetricians. So it is quite factual, but it is not like a boring textbook. I was worried that this was going to be like reading a textbook in school or in med school, and it's certainly not. It's made for us. It is made for the people who just want to learn and get a summary about what the heck is going on. I was surprised in a positive way to find out that this book also covers conception by the time I bought it I had already conceived so I skipped over that part but it does conception then the whole pregnancy labor and delivery and then post so it talks about breastfeeding and um, exercises to do before you start officially exercising and things of that nature it also covers complications, but it usually prioritizes the norm or what most women experience during pregnancy. So there's not a ton of fear mongering going on in this one. Um, it's also very well organized, so you don't have to read every page. You can hop just to the month or week that you're currently experiencing and read that. Or you can hop to learn about breastfeeding if you're getting curious about breastfeeding. It's not the kind of thing that I've been reading every single page, every single chapter. It's more like a reference book that I hop around and really have been enjoying. There are also diagrams <clears throat> for different things. So there's some visuals. You know, here's a visual, I believe, of the measuring the uh, size of the baby from the outside. So they kind of, if there's something that needs a visual assistance, they provide it. They also have some kind of like fill in the blanks. So this is their example of a birth plan and it just has check boxes. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a worksheet. Um, and also what's kind of cool is every month, the month starts, here's my month. The month starts with an overview of the weeks, very high level what to, what's going on. It gets into things you might be experiencing, healthy um, things that the baby is going through, and then it finishes off every month with um, kind of like an exercise of the month. It's been a lot of months, but it hasn't been every month, I guess, because my current month doesn't have one. But here's last month, it was, they gave a little exercise of the month to roll your ankles for like blood flow, improve circulation to your legs and feet. Really, really user-friendly, factual, to the point. It's like having your doctor on call. To accompany that book though, I didn't want something that was just kind of like so direct and dry and factual. I ha was given this book by my sister-in-law. I'm almost done with it, as you can see. This is perhaps, perhaps my favorite of the three. It's called Expecting Better. It's by Emily Oster. And 
this woman is a economist, I believe. Yes, she's an economist who got pregnant and found herself diving deep into the data that she would hear something from her doctor, like in that book, and then want to look at the data herself. And in that experience, throughout her pregnancy, doing all of that research herself, she decided to write a book about it and give you the data, but then empower yourself, empowers us to make our own decisions based on that data. For instance, they tackle things like, like drinking during pregnancy, weight gain, cheese and sushi, bed rest, you know, some kind of hot topics. She gives you what the research says and then um, helps you kind of think through your own decision that you might make based on the research. The tone of this one is like having a really, really educated friend who is in pregnancy research sit across the table from you and chit chat about what the heck a pregnancy is all about. It's very conversational. It is like having that best friend by your side. For that reason, I think this book is particularly great for someone like me in that I don't have a ton of friends who have been pregnant before. I know a handful of women who've been pregnant before, but I'm not having a ton of girl chat about pregnancy and what's going on with me. And secondly, it's also for the person who likes to think independently. So I do trust and I value research and data, but I also don't necessarily want to just follow the conventional path all the time. I like to know the options and then form my own opinion and act on that. So this book is certainly a tool for a, pers for a pregnant person, yourself or a friend, who fits those descriptors as well. It's also kind of addicting. Like I will read so many pages of this in the blink of an eye and not really want to put it down. Something about the format of the book that I really like is at the end of every chapter, so this is the end of a chapter, the start of a new one. At the end, she shares kind of like, the bottom line is this. So she will have a few bullets that summarize the chapter and I have found that useful to go back to. So if I look up, um, this is the chapter on working out and resting up. So it's about exercise and rest. She has a little bit of a bottom line section. I can reference this. Having read the chapter, I can quickly look here and remind myself, oh yeah, that's what to cons that is what that is what to consider. <sighs> Pregnancy update. This week has been the first week that I have undeniable pregnancy brain. It's I'm at about 31 weeks now. And every day I will have a couple moments of total brain moving on. The third and final book I would recommend today for you to kind of consider and start with is actually a book about once baby is here. So those two are certainly focused on conception and pregnancy and kind of like your body, and, you know, the, the physical stuff. I wanted to think about and start to start brainstorming how I want to raise a human in this world. Not that I'm overly intense about you know, having a plan and you know being very rigid about it. I more like to dream up options and have people who've been there give me some structure about how to think about raising a little human. So it's more of this exploratory option gathering phase that I'm in. Um, so that I can imagine how I might want to approach raising a human. This has been my favorite book for that. It's called Your Self-Confident Baby, which I think is such a cheesy title <laughs> and cover. Like when I got it in the mail, I was like, I can never read this in public. It looks so cheesy. Um, that might be just my own opinion. Well, it definitely is my own opinion. But the content of this book is compelling. There are a few basic principles that the book lays out and then dives deep into how it can be applied 
once your baby is here. I'll read you off a couple of their basic principles, but there are seven of them. So the basic principles of the philosophy, um, he believes that adhering to these principles promotes a respectful approach to raising your child. One is that, let's see, an environment for the child that is physically safe, cognitively challenging, and emotionally nurturing. There are three parts to that, right? But it's talking about the environment you can provide to your child. A, physically safe. They are not in physical danger. Great, we can all get on that bandwagon. Uh, cognitively challenging. So this part is nuanced because the way they want to be cognitively challenged evolves as their brain evolves, since the book talks about that. Like when they're infants, you know, something that's cognitively challenging is just looking at a black and white square pattern, right? <laughs> and then when they're six months, they might want to stare at a tree that's blowing in the wind and see a kid playing, right? That's cognitively challenging. It depends on their age and development. But anyway, the third being emotionally nurturing. So they talk about, you know, the kid feeling certain things and feeling nurtured by you. How do you do that? The book walks through all of that stuff. Another basic principle is, oh, I like this one. It's kind of like the anti-helicopter parent principle. It's uh, sensitive observation of the child in order to understand her needs. So I've just started understanding this principle. Again, there are seven and I just mentioned two of them, but the sensitive observation is basically that you should intentionally take some time to just be in observance of your child. And I really appreciate that because it's, it's the removing of yourself from them and from their play. You're still present, you are observing, but you're also um, becoming sensitive to what they're interested in. You watch them solve problems. You can see how their development currently is so that you know where their um, status is, or uh, I'm struggling to describe it, I guess, in brief, but <laughs> if you know how your child is behaving and what they can do, what they can't do, then you know how to support them best and when to step back and let them figure something out versus always hopping in. No, 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 you can be an observer and watch them in a safe environment. This book was recommended to me, not directly, but through actually Mimi Icon. I don't know if you, any of you know Mimi, but she has a toddler now, and she said that she read this book and really enjoyed the principles. I was curious by the way that she described it, grabbed it, and have been definitely enjoying it myself. So. In summary, we've got this one that's like having your obstetrician in your back pocket. A great reference guide, great for maybe that first time mom that doesn't really know what's ahead. This one, expecting better, for like having that girl chat with a friend who is incredibly knowledgeable and has done all the research on pregnancy decisions and gives you the data so that you can make your own decisions for yourself. And this book to help you kind of wrap your head around how you might approach raising a child, being around a child, and supporting a child so that they have a happy little upbringing. All together, I think it's a nice round sampling of um, thoughts and opinions to be exposed to in this stage. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I, you know, I'll read blogs or I'll read my little apps. Like I've been loving the bump app still, but having a book and sitting down with a book and not being on a screen sometimes is so cozy and comforting. And let's be honest, the amount of time we're all spent just cozying up on the couch increases during pregnancy. So why not nuzzle up with an interesting book? <laughs> okay, I'll link all three of these below. Please do let me know if you have uh, questions or 
if you pick one of these up and you like it. You can also leave a suggestion in the comments below if you have a book that I haven't mentioned in my top three, but was in your top three. That'd be really cool. You can share it with the other people who tune into this video and stay tuned for more. I always am open to video suggestions as well. So that's another thing you could write in the comments if you'd like. Check out other videos here on my channel while you're poking around YouTube today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye everyone.